to be reviewing this 12.3 inches Android radio unit. Uh, we'll check the user interface. We'll check its capability. And we'll compare with the other systems I have installed here. So stay tuned. And uh, thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks. the original launcher uh, for this unit in Android you you can download what they call launchers and they are just uh, like a skin that changed the uh, the user interface which is kind of cool because if you got bored of this for example then you can change it to something else um, the unit I will be receiving have a skin or a launcher that is more similar to PCM uh, in the Gen 3 Porsche McCann. So that's what I configured. This specific launcher is from Car Web Guru. I'll put the, the link um, in the video so that you can see it. When you get this uh, Car Web Guru uh, launcher, you can go to settings and settings. And this is where you would input the vehicle information, the interface, program, statistic, multimedia, um, application system options. I don't remember where I changed the... Uh, I'm using the interface. Uh, here is where you can set your launcher. Mine is set to Carwell Guru. Uh, this one is the native launcher. Let me show you that. So that that's a launcher that the unit came with. Um, I didn't like that very much. So I changed it. So I need to find a way to leave this install home oh, map all right so now i'm changing the home map to carway guru let's let's start with uh with the features of of, of the system right so um start with settings you have a number of uh, settings here you have the network uh, that you can set up you can set your display sound um, you have the different type of uh, sound settings here uh, general uh, gives you uh, some general settings, uh, sleep time, panel light settings, 
navigation application settings um, satellite info there so there um, that's where you get all the signal from the GPS antenna um, app permission amplifying control etc etc et I haven't played with these all the time uh, I activated the the battery um, voltage there um, so that's that original it shows uh, temperature condition settings or door display from radar display steering wheel temperature and steering wheel um, this is supposed to help you program the steering wheel control but uh, it doesn't do anything uh, for these uh, steering wheel controls in the Porsche I think that this is a Porsche issue it's not really a, a um, an Android radio uh, system issue and I'll talk more about that later then this is your reverse controls when you're um, you put the, the shifter in reverse what do you want to do here I only activated that uh, reversing line ruler which add some additional rulers to the reversing uh, camera all right I'll show you the rear view camera that's how it look like So this is uh, the normal PCM 3.1 um, for the normal camera uh, line guides. And then by enabling the reversing trajectory and reversing line ruler, then you get those two additional lines All right um, you've been seeing uh, the radar um, proximity radar popping up here I find it more sensitive than with PCM for some reason it, uh, it brings that more often and when you are in reverse, then you don't have it here. Unfortunately, a silhouette is um, a, a BMW silhouette. I haven't found a way to replace that with the Macan silhouette. Uh, if I find a way, then I'll let you guys know. Uh, voice control, personal. Uh, here, the phone link app 
I activated the T-Link. Uh, Android Radio doesn't have a native CarPlay system, so it relies on an app that I'll show you later. Although it works very well in integrating CarPlay into Android Radio. And then you have to really uh, select these to be able to activate CarPlay. If you don't activate these, uh, I spent a lot of time trying to activate CarPlay and I didn't know this was here. So I activated it and the it, it connection happened immediately. Um, yes. tested this and when for example I I deactivated the comfort entry and I check in the M, a multi function display and it it deactivates the option out of my uh, it reacts to to this input. So as I'm deactivating comfort entry here I see how the check mark disappears in the MFD. I activate and it, it appears again so so that's that let me see if i can show you that yeah i, I should be able to show you that let me go to settings here right so i'm in the reversing option lowering mirrors so if i go to reversing options here and I say option off you'll see how the check mark will disappear here right and again so it, it works um, it with some of the functions of the car right so on the other aspects, for example, if I go to navigation, this one uh, have um, a, a pretty neat navigation system. Uh, and uh, it, is, it, it can be used offline. So if you ever lose a, sig a signal, then you, you, you can use this because it provides offline navigation. Um, and then it has uh, some other functions, um, uh, music. So, so with music, uh, I program that to go to CarPlay. And these buttons, I program them to control uh, the functions in CarPlay because I'm not using the native radio of this unit, right? If, so in terms of wheel controls, you have some limited uh, 
you have some limited functionality with the wheel control, right? So you can use the volume up and down. Uh, you can mute by pressing the button, so that works. Uh, if if you're receiving a call, you can press the 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 phone pickup button and it will pick the call even in, with CarPlay but if you want to make a call uh, you this function will, the, this button will not work for that um, the diamond is not programmable in this point right so the only the only thing that the diamond does um, is uh, changing the mode in the radio in the in the unit so you'll see as i'm pressing the the diamond is changing the mode so this is a the native um, song application uh, the native uh, player uh, then video phone and uh, if I if I press the the, the phone pickup button to make uh, try to make a call then it will take me to this application outside of carplay then aux and this is the radio application uh, the radio is quite nice right so it works the same way as a normal radio it doesn't have uh, DAV plus um, I don't think so for uh, you guys in Europe um, but it's a uh, it's a radio function All right going back to Navi um, and then uh, on the other buttons uh, you can always um, hang the call by pressing this one, right? So this works. Uh, and these two buttons are used to control the multifunction display, right? So it's okay that these two buttons don't control the unit because I want these two buttons to control the MFT. Uh, now for CarPlay, um, as I said, well, let me go to the apps first. So you have press this button. These are all the apps you have um, settings, which we already uh, uh, look at. This T-Link is the CarPlay application. Car settings, I uh, already uh, we talk about that. The file manager is where you get all the, uh, can put all the files. We're gonna talk about that in a different video. Then the boot animation as well. We're we'll gonna talk about that in a different video. Um, steering wheel is, is I show you that it's already is where you program your steering wheel controls um, voice control I think that for this you have to pay that the, this is the music application which we already saw um, the Google uh, Google Maps uh, and uh, there are a bunch of other applications here the radio video uh, gyroscope Bluetooth. All right on the equalizer, uh, I wanted to uh, provide a, a more more of a full review here because I think this is an important part of the whole system. As you know, in PCM 3.1, you only have base and travel adjustment, and a unit like this will give you more um, uh, options to tune your system. I like to tune my system to um, Harman Curve, uh, which is um, the standard uh, curve uh, for uh, tuning systems like this. And uh, I've done the, the Harman Curve tuning at the amplifier level, because as you know, I have an aftermarket amplifier. And uh, so as such, I always keep my head unit flat in all, in all aspects, right? But you could uh, select um, jazz, pop, classical, 
rock, uh, soft, vocal, heavy metal. And uh, you see here that only you have uh, the frequencies for 20 to 315, which is shown here. These are the lower frequencies. But if you scroll, you start uh, looking at the, these are the mid-range frequencies and then the high frequency, which is really nice because it is really arranged in a way that it makes it intuitive, high, mid, and low ranges, right? And then you you see here, you cannot adjust the frequencies, right? So if you try to make this 70, like 75, you will not be able to do that, uh, which is a drawback. In Mr. 12 volt, you can actually adjust that frequency, but not here. But you can actually adjust the Q factor, uh, which is the the width of of the of the curve that this adjustment would, will cover, right? With the lower number being a smaller um, curve and the uh, larger number being more wider, right? So this gives you a little bit of flexibility in terms of what you can do. Um, so that's the equalizer again uh, very powerful in my view uh, then you have surround sound uh, which i think this is going to be a welcome feature for some of you that like the both surround option although it's not as it's not as exaggerated as the both surround sound uh, but it is, um, it, it gives you that surround enveloping sound, right? So you have different modes here that you can try, uh, right? Um, I think that uh, um, you have bass boost. As you can see, mine is off. Um, I, I'm doing all my boost at the amplifier level, as I said before. So this will uh, allow you to uh, uh, set the, the music or the the, di the distances between the the speakers, right? Uh, for a preferential driver, um, passenger, uh, or rear passenger uh, sound. I don't think this does anything, um, to be honest. Um, uh, I think that what happens is that uh, you when 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 before you take out the PCM you need to make make sure that 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 the settings that you have in the PCMs are the ones you like because that's adjusting the amplifier um, preferentially you would want to leave everything flat and completely balanced before you take the PCM if you like both surround and you want to permanently activate that, go ahead and activate it with the PCM before you take it out. And any of the options you like in the with the both systems, uh, activate them before you take out the PCM because they, they will remain activated because they are active at the amplifier level and not the PCM level, right? So when you take that out, then you can... Um, when you put this one in, then those settings remain. Um, but obviously you cannot control those settings with this unit. So um, once they're uh, active in the ampli amplifier, they'll remain active until you put back the PCM. Um, and then the, it has a bass filter. These are also, is also off in my, in my system. Uh, I'm not, using that but I think that this is a basically it what it does is the cutoff of the of the bass um, uh, at different frequencies that you see here right so um, this is a the summary of the equalizer um, the equalizer does actually impact the sound so this one you can use uh, with the Bose amplifier because this uh, it basically filters or uh, tune the, the, the signal before it sends it out to the amplifier. All right?
right? So this ha also has a lot of apps that you would find in the, in CarPlay. I use this in CarPlay. In order to use these apps here, you have to connect these to um, to a hotspot. So um, or you have to uh, get a, a SIM card and uh, I'm not doing that so so that's what that's uh, that's what I have um, so these are other skins that I've downloaded um, car penguin I, I thought this one was going to be uh, better for uh, um, it, it looks a lot like the like the PCM uh, screen, but it, it, it doesn't have a lot of flexibility, so I am not uh, using that. And then Vivid uh, is another one uh, which I'm not using either, right? So I do like uh, the, the Car Web Guru uh, much better. All right, let's go to CarPlay now. And uh, so this is a uh, CarPlay, as you can see, is very responsive, right? And uh, you have the same features at, as you would have in CarPlay. Um, it is very responsive uh, if you turn the car off and you're in CarPlay and then come back it will it will restart in CarPlay as you can see uh, play some music uh, hopefully royalty free music um, so you can hear it better if you use your headphones to listen at this then you'll hear the full capability of my system as well which is going to be very different to yours if you're using both
So uh, this is the audio. Um, I think it's a very good audio quality comparable to PCM 3.1 uh, and comparable with PCM 3.1 um, together with Mr. 12 volt. A few more features here um, in this specific launcher. If you want to just look at the the spectrum sound spectrum here for the music, you can do that. As I can, as I said, you can control the the CarPlay music here. Keep. Another feature of this launcher is that you have several options you can put here. You can put your uh, the car logo, but if you uh, keep pressing on it, you can change to a, a compass. Then. Uh, I think this would be uh, related to the navigation, so you can put the navigation here. Uh, it will give you the, the speed based on navigation, time, and the logo. So one thing about this, I mean, you lose the, the navigation in the MFD, but you have it here. Uh, all right. So now on the things that you, you lose, uh, especially in the MFD, you you will lose the you will lose the maps. Uh, obviously, uh, let me go into the into the display and the menu scope. So you lose the audio uh, projected in the in the MFD. You lose the phone map and navigation. So. What I did is I just unmark it from the menu scope so that it doesn't even appear. It makes the, the, the menu more narrow, easier to navigate. Uh, so you still have the trip, the TP, TPMS, torch plate, G-Force, and performance, as well as the, as the main display, which is this one. Uh, you have the trip, TPMS, torch plate, g-force performance and that's it right uh, you also uh, because you don't have the pcm uh, 3.1 anymore you you uh, there, there's some certain things that from uh, from the ECU that uh, com uh, communicates to PCM uh, like the gateway communicates uh, with the PCM because there are certain systems that require information from the PCM, especially GPS uh, coordinate information. For example, uh, uh, something like intersection, intersection lightning, if you have that option, and many of you uh, ask me uh, or ask what intersection lightning is, right? So that uh, uh, when you have that feature, when you approach an intersection, it uses GPS information to know when it, when the car is approaching an intersection, and then, and then it turns both cornering lights on at the same time. Uh, so you have more illumination in the intersection, right? So uh, you lose that because you don't have the PCM 3.1 connected anymore, providing that GPS information to the system to know when to turn the lights on uh, or the corner lights on. Um, so all in all, there are four uh, faults, passive faults that are generated uh, with the removal of PCM 3.1. And uh, those are uh, passive and, and non-impacting, meaning that the car continues to operate without any issues and without uh, giving uh, or displaying those faults, right? Right, finally, and as a summary, I'd like to recap the whole review with the Santirx score, uh, which I'm showing here. Um, installation, 
I think this unit is overall easy to install if you have instructions, right? This unit came without instructions and there were some um, uh, some specific items that were very intuitive to do for someone that has installed systems in the past, but there were still some components that I needed to help with. So with that, I'm giving the installation a score of four. Pairing uh, this unit, the pairing is very, very good. So once you set it up, I don't think you need to worry about it. I'll probably do a long-term review and see if this uh, maintains, but so far pairing has been very good. Uh, connection reliability has been extremely good with this system, so I'm giving that a score of 10. I've had no issues uh, with the connection whatsoever, at least so far. This may change in a long-term review. Video quality is phenomenal with this system, so I'm giving that a, a 10. Audio with the Toslink uh, audio digital output Audio quality is also phenomenal, right? So I'm giving that a score of 10. System integration, this is a, I was calling this PCM integration before, but uh, I wanted to get away uh, from PCM integration because this is not PCM. So I'm calling this system integration and it's how well the system integrates with the rest of the car systems. I'm giving this a score of three because it it doesn't integrate as well with steering wheel. Obviously, you lose some functionality on the MFD, and then because you don't have the PCM, it generates the, the four the four passive faults, and you lose things like the intersection lighting if you use that. Tuning and equalization is a ten. You saw the equalizer is very similar to Mr. Twelve Volt. And then uh, as far as OEM look and feel, which is a new score I'm, add, I'm adding, um, I'm giving that a score of six. Um, the vents here are not that good looking, um, but the knob buttons are very big. Uh, I think that they're too big for the system, but the rest of the system really looks good. Uh, for a subtotal of 56, if you compare that with the P Mr. 12 volt with PCM 3.1, my score was fi was 52. The Isudar, my score was 48, and for Joy, my score was 27. For this specific system, I had a very good experience with the customer service. They were very responsive. They answered all my questions very quickly, and um, they were very very helpful. So I'm giving customer service a score of eight which is very comparable to Mr. 12 volt. So overall, the total for this system is 64 versus Mr. 12 volt is a close 60. You won't go wrong with either system, I guess. Uh, that's, I think, the, the, the point I'm trying to make here. The difference is really insignificant. Uh, the only difference is that this screen is huge compared to the PCM 3.1, which now looks like a postage stamp. Then for Isudar, the overall score is 52 and Joy is 28. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned. There are more videos coming out. And uh, the way to stay tuned is by subscribing to the channel. Thank you for joining.